This is the Pergear 14mm f2.8 ultra wide angle lens for the Nikon Z mount. It's a quarter of the price of the 14 to 30mm f4s lens and one eighth of the price of the Nikon Z 14 to 24mm f2.8s lens. I'm just going to pause there for dramatic effect. Okay, that's enough. I just have one question. For that type of money, what type of lens do you get? Find out in this review. A quick thank you to the team at Pergear for sending me this 14mm f2.8 ultra wide angle lens to test and review. But Pergear aren't actually paying me to do this video, so any sort of findings or opinions I've got of this lens are mine alone. For the last two weeks, I've been out testing this lens on my full frame Nikon Z7 with all the in camera lens corrections turned on. Primarily, I think this budget lens is aimed at astro, landscape and architectural photographers. So that's the type of photography I was doing. Let's look at the specs. It's a full frame lens that is completely manual. In other words, you have to manually focus all your shots as well as adjust the aperture via the aperture ring at the front. You have no control over this lens via your camera body. It weighs 500 grams and has an all metal construction, including the screw in lens hood has an 82 mm filter thread, so that's a bit of a bonus for those that like to use filters regularly. Minimum focus distance is 43 centimeters and the aperture range is from f2.8 to f22. The aperture ring has nice definitive clicks. It can be used on APS-C cameras where the focal length becomes 21 mm. Has no image stabilization and is not weather sealed. To get focus more accurately, I utilize the focus peaking feature on the Z7. I think this is actually the easiest way to focus with this lens and anything I could see in red was my focus point. So one thing I was actually interested to learn about this lens is not only does it come in Nikon Z mount, but you also can get it in Sony E mount, the Leica or Panasonic L mount, but also the Canon RF mount. You heard right, the Canon RF mount. At the time of making this review, the Pergear 14mm f2.8 ultra wide angle lens retails on Amazon for 299 US dollars. To begin with here, I wanted to check for things like sharpness, softness in corners and vignetting. Here's some shots of a light brick wall at various apertures. At f2.8, you can see the vignetting is quite substantial. The sharpness is quite good in the middle of the shot, but ordinary in the corners of the frame. As I step through the apertures from f2.8 to f11, you can see some improvement in both vignetting and corner sharpness, with the sweet spot looking at around about f8. You can see on the top screen of the Z7, as well as on the back LCD screen, you don't get any sort of f-stop information. And also in post-processing, you'll get no sort of focal length or f-stop information. It does, however, have your ISO and shutter speed. Okay, so we're back in the studio and I've got the shots that I've been taking over the last two weeks. We're gonna start off with landscape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put all the settings for all the shots down the bottom of the screen so I don't have to say it and it just moves things along pretty quickly. This shot here was taken at Beachmere of this dead tree. Nice top of a wide angle here, had some nice clouds and everything like that. You can see that I was focused pretty much on all the tree when you look at the footage. Even at F11, we got some nice corners happening there on that tree, just pushing in. That is nice and super sharp. Let's just check out that root system up the back there. So already the signs are looking pretty good. We've got a 299 US dollar lens. So with this composition while I had it, I thought it would be interesting if I whacked a filter on the front. So I put the Freewell 16 and a half stop and I ended up getting a five minute 30 exposure. One thing that actually hit me when I was first using this lens is the colors. The colors that I'm getting from this lens are pretty impressive. Now, when I'm hanging around those apertures at f8 and f11 also, I'm also getting very good results. You can see up in the corners here, even on this very long exposure, I'm just getting the slightest little tiny bit of clipping. That is actually from the filter. But seriously, you can get rid of that in post very quickly. Yeah, so if you're a landscape photographer and you're just wanting a cheap wide angle lens, big tick there for the per gear. Okay, so next were some architectural shots. Traditionally, I'm not an architectural photographer, but I gave it a go anyway. So 
Just went down to one of the local town halls here and this is the shot that I ended up getting. Settings are down the bottom of the screen. Of all the shots that I took in the two weeks, this one was probably the one that impressed me the most about the lens. We've got edge to edge sharpness. Let me just push in on this clock tower for you. Look how tack sharp that is. Even up the top on that weather vane there, I'm not getting any sort of chroma or fringing. Even in on this window here, you can see it's sharp. Down in this brickwork in the corner, it's still pretty good. I've got a bit of a light star on that street light, as well as I've got some light trails going through with the cars. I then moved around to the side of the building and got this angle. And looking up, you can see even in the corners where I've just got that little tiny bit of that clock tower, it's quite sharp. On this night, I was quite impressed with the images I was getting with this lens. This is another angle on the corner where you can see the whole clock tower as well as the whole building. And I've got light trails going up on the side there. But pushing in, we can just start to see the faintest little stars coming out next to the clock tower. From this town hall, I ducked across and got this quick shot of this restaurant. I wanted to see if I could get any sort of stars on these lights that were in the trees. You scan around this shot, look at this motorbike here, but look at the clarity on that motorbike with those lights. Even on this street light on the left hand side, you've got that nice starburst happening. And on all these little lights, they have got little tiny stars on them. That is pretty impressive for a budget lens. One thing I wanted to test is if this lens had any sort of effect on the dynamic range coming out of the Z7. So I took this shot of this tree and I've got the sun behind it. So you can see this tree is pretty dark lit. Now this is it when I lift up the shadows in post-processing. You can see everything is pretty tack sharp, even up into the corners. I'm not getting any sort of chroma or fringing on those branches. So no, I wasn't getting any sort of nasty effects in dynamic range. I just wanted to do a quick test to see what the bokeh would be like out of this lens at f2.8 with the minimum focus distance of 43 centimeters. So I took this shot out in my bird garden and if you haven't actually seen that video yet, I'll leave it up here for you to check out a little bit later on. But pushing into the center, you can see we've got that nice tack sharpness on that flower. When we go up into the corners, this is where we start to see that softness appearing again. Here's a shot of some leaves. And if I push in, this is the leaf that I was actually focused on. So you can see some quite nice sharp definition in the veins in that leaf. Sunstar test, this shot was taken at f16. As you can see, you get some nice sun stars. You do get a little bit of lens flaring, but that's kind of common when you've got a wide angle lens. I was super keen to do some astro with this lens, but unfortunately at the time of making this video, it's not the traditional astro season here where I'm able to capture the Milky Way. But I went out anyway and got some star shots over a local pier. Okay, so this is the first of some of the astro shots that I took that night down near the local pier. And with this shot, I was actually sitting at F8 because I wanted to get some stars coming off of those lights that were going out along the pier. This shot, when you look at it and you push in, you can see those stars quite clearly are starting to come out above the pier. I mean, that's the great thing about having an ultra wide angle like 14 millimeters. You can really take advantage of those lead in lines going into your shot. What I did then is I moved down to the right hand side of the pier and I thought I'd use the pier as a lead in line going out in perspective and above it, I'd put stars and I'd get a little bit of movement of the waves coming in. So if you look closer into this shot, you can actually see the big dipper. This shot was taken just after the sun had gone down because you can just see that slight pink glow on the horizon still. And you do get that little bit of trail in the clouds. This is another shot angling over towards the right away from the pier. That's the port of Brisbane that you see glowing in the background. Again, I only took this shot because I wanted to get mainly the stars, but it kind of worked out because I had the lights from the car park coming down and hitting the beach in front of me. And I got this nice motion in the water with the waves coming in. And by the looks, that's probably something like a satellite going across the sky there. Okay, so the next test I did was with some video. So I did some 4K at 25p coming out of the Z7, as well as some HD slow-mo, some HD in-camera slow-mo actually. And that turned the lens into a 21 millimeter focal length because when you do HD slow-mo on the Z7, you get that one and a half crop. Still was able to achieve some nice bokeh in the background at f2.8 in the slow motion. And again, even in video, you can still take advantage of this wide angle lens using lead in lines, things like railings or boardwalks or jetties. But one thing where that 14 millimeter focal length really excels in is in time lapses, especially time lapses with clouds going across the sky. To be honest, 
I was a tiny bit skeptical about this lens when I first got it due to its low price point. You'll never get the exact same performance as you would with the more expensive native lenses, but you can go very close as this review has shown. If you aim at using this lens for its strengths and not its weaknesses, then you can end up getting some pretty nice images in both stills and video. And when you think about it, for the price you pay or the money you save, depending on how you look at it, you're getting a versatile, low light, ultra wide angle prime lens that's compact and can take screw in filters. In this day and age where we rely heavily on things like autofocus and eye detect and basically where the camera does everything for us, I actually had a bit of fun with this lens despite being all manual. It kind of took me back to the good old days of my first 35 millimeter SLR film camera where I had to adjust everything manually to get the desired effects and shots I wanted. So if your budget's tight and you can't afford to fork out thousands of dollars on an ultra wide angle lens, then maybe give this Pergear 14 millimeter f2.8 a look. For more information on this Pergear 14 millimeter lens, I've actually left you some links in the description box below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.